Hey, it's Insane Gamers, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Heart Gold. So, in the last episode, we got to beautiful Olivine City. And that's about it. There's a bunch of sailors here, and he won't get out of my way. I also got a Pokemon at no surf, you know, just, just so I have it. It's a level 52 Krabby. No, anyway, I'm going to be surfing on a crab. Just try to imagine that image. A guy surfing on a crab. Anyhow, um, I guess today we're going to climb this lighthouse. It's probably going to take an entire episode, because it is sort of long, you know, with all the with all the battles and trainers in it, but at least it has awesome music we can listen to whilst climbing. Do, 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 da, da. And it's got this guy here who has a knocktail, and I know that because I'm a nerd, yes! So he's a gentlemanly gentleman. Look at him. He's holding a Pokeball like he has a watch. Anyhow, there's a Noctowl. I was planning... I was going to use a Noctowl in this run. Then I figured, you know... Mm, maybe not. So anyhow, uh, no luck as of yet on catching a Quailfish. I know where to catch them. I have the good rod. It's just a matter of, you know, finding one. Okay, wow. I'm getting a lot of burn eggs. Off screen, I was, like, grinding on some wild guys just because I can. And crap. Well, anyhow, I was grinding off screen, and I was getting a lot of burn hacks. It was pretty awesome. So, anyhow, Quillfish is like, uh, like a 1% chance of appearing with the Super Rod. So, it's really annoying to find. I mean, you've got to get lucky, and the fact that it's a Super Rod and not just a normal wild encounter makes it really annoying. But, hopefully, I'll find one eventually. Like I said, if I, if I can't find a Quillfish, I guess I'm going to have to go... With my second option, which was Lapras. And honestly, I think Lapras would work out a lot better in the long run, but you guys weren't Quillfish, so I've got to honor what you've chosen. Um, okay, Mother, what have you bought me now? <sighs> I remember in, um, the original, she buys you, like, Poke Dolls in your room and stuff. I always thought that was kind of weird, because, you know, you can only really use them in your room, and... Sailor time! Gay sailors, hooray! Yeah, there's a lot of water types and flying types in here. The flying types I can understand, water types, oh well, I guess they are sailors, so we're Poliwag! I remember you from episode... 4? No, crap, I used Fire Punch. Darn it. Well, um, kill it anyway. Nope, not even. Oh, wow, good job, Flamon. More burn. That's what we like to see. Wait, they don't get Swift Swim in this generation, do they? No, they don't. I don't think they do. Well, I'm gonna mock punch it just to be safe. You can never be too, uh, sure about this kind of stuff. I know for a fact Quillfish does, though, because it's awesome. It's a giant pufferfish. Which, by the way, you can actually eat pufferfish, despite the fact that they're one of the most poisonous fish you can eat. Like, if, if it's not prepared right, it will kill you. Which is pretty, um... I, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Oh, you have not got to be kidding me. I thought you were going to use Water Gun and kill me. Anyway, yeah, if Pufferfish isn't prepared just right, you can die from eating it. I don't know why you would eat a poisonous fish. Heck, in Korea or whatever, they eat freaking live octopus. Like, yeah, that's a good idea. If any of you know the show A Thousand Ways to Die, you've probably seen the episode where the guy gets, you know, killed because he eats a live octopus or something. Yeah, that show is just... It's a good show, it's just that half the time, most of the death stories are just so blown out of proportion. They're like, just... They make it seem like every single person who dies is like the worst person in the world. They're a horrible, horrible person, and karma, you know. I'm sure they're not really that bad, it's just... Most of the deaths are overblown. Oh, and there was one episode where... You know, you know the clip on the internet where the salesman, um... He's on fail blog where he climbs on the ladder and it breaks out. It like breaks underneath him and he falls. And then there's the one where the um the freaking samurai sword breaks and he gets hurt by that. Yeah, a thousand ways to die. We're like we're gonna take that and make it our own story, even though it's already an internet sensation. It's just um kind of stupid. That just proves to me that half of their stories are BS. But we already knew that anyhow. So oh no, not more of this. I was planning on rollout sweeping this guy to death, but yeah, I'm not going to be able to now, am I? Because he's being a freaking noob. Come on. Why must every Pidgey learn Sand Attack? Why is this necessary? I mean, it's just not cool. 
Maybe I can still get a rollout sweep. Maybe uh, Dunsparce is feeling up to it. Let's see. Okay, come on. Roll over his team. Yes, there's number two. Goodbye, Pidge. And Dunsparce, in his true Dunsparce-like fashion, is going absolutely rape sauce on the opponent's team. With rollout. If any of you remember the uh, second gym battle. Okay, anyway. Good, luck, good job I'm not missing. So, a thousand ways to die. Entertaining show to watch. Rots your mind and is completely dumb, but hey. It's, it kills half an hour, so, ah, oh, I missed. And he's going for sand attack again. <sighs> Why does this not surprise me? Oh, well, this should, this should kill him. If it doesn't, it'll just flinch him. Yep, he's dead. Good job, Herp Derp. You couldn't, you couldn't really see where you're going, because, you know, they had sand in your face. But then again, you never open your eyes anyway, so I don't know what the problem there was. Uh, we'll just put him out front so we can get another level. Yeah, I really need to get a third Pokemon, because <laughs> the Fighting-type gym leader is going to be an absolute biatch to fight, because I don't have anything good against fighting. I have... I mean... Dunsparce will get raped by fighting attacks. Freaking Bayleaf... Well, I guess I could kill the Polyrath, but, you know. I guess my, um... My flinching Ted strategy won't work either, because they can just easily kill me. Oh, good, flinch. Speaking of flinching strategies... Okay, dude, why? Why do these people use full restores? I'm faster than them anyway, so they're gonna die in two hits. And just to rub it in your face, I'm gonna use rollout. Because that attack is win. I'm pretty sure this guy has two Growlithes, though, so maybe that wasn't a good idea. So he's gonna intimidate me again. Uh, oh well. Yep, he's got another Growlithe. Growlithe, Growlithe. Gas ball biting dog. To reference our Pikmin Master there. So I got minus two attack now, but that should cancel out because rollout is now at double the power. So let's see if that works. Not quite. Almost there. Once again, you're being completely stupid and pointless by using an attack that doesn't even damage me. Goodbye, Growlithe. Okay, that wasn't, uh, too exciting. So, anyhow, what other TV shows are out there that... They're, they're fun to watch, but they're... Oh, well, I know a TV show that's really fun to watch. Um, have you ever... You guys know Gordon Ramsay, right? The famous, uh, British chef? He basically just swears, and... He has such a bad mouth, but just... That's always funny. So, anyway, he, uh, he has a, a lot of TV shows, but my favorite of them are Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares, where he goes to, like crap restaurants, and they've got, like, cockroaches in the kitchen, and, like, big bugs in the salad and crap. I remember this one, um, this one Indian restaurant, it was really bad, and the food was just horrendous, and at the beginning of every episode, he eats the food, and he actually legitly went into the bathroom and threw up, it was that bad. Then he went into the kitchen and had an absolute meltdown, and only the fashion Gordon Ramsay can have a meltdown. Oh, TM87. 87. Yeah, what am I, like, five? Anyway, he, he just throwing out cuss words like crazy. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, you are you are just a tankly beast, okay? So what's over here? A rare candy. Uh, I might be able to use that. How soon can I get Lapras? I mean, can I get Lapras now? Do, or do I need strength? Whatever. Anyway, he went down into the basement where they keep their food. He had, there was maggots in the freaking salad. Like, in the fridge, cockroaches everywhere, the meat was out of date, everything was disgusting, there were green hamburgers, he had a total fit about that. The walk-in fridge was absolutely, it was, it was like a porta potty it was horrible. So anyway, he turned it around, and I think it went right back down to uh, being dirty again, and like in six months, but, yeah, that show is just funny. There was this other episode where this lady was complaining about the food. She was like, oh, the, the pasta sauce is horrible. It tastes like I'm eating Prego or something. And Gordon, <laughs> Gordon Ramsay went up to her and said, you know, you'd better shut up, basically, because, you know, it was his own recipe of sauce, so he was pretty peeved that she was tell saying it was crap. So he had her stand up next to him, <laughs> and as people were coming in, he was he was telling everybody, you know, ignore the old bag. <laughs> she <laughs> just ignore what she's saying. She was really angry at him. It was funny. Then there was a fight in the parking lot or something because these two drunk people were like, 
I don't even know. It was just... That episode just cracked me up. And then there was this one guy, Sebastian's Pizza Place. He was so bent on having his own frozen food line. And he was just so stuck up and arrogant. Like, I'm the best thing in Critical Hit. Yes, I'm the best thing in the world. And I think the climax of the episode is when Sebastian has his meltdown. Basically, Gordon Ramsay tells him he needs to shut up and listen to what Gordon is trying to tell him. Sebastian goes completely flips out on him, tells him to get out of his restaurant, takes a vacuum cleaner and throws it across the room, and then that didn't do as much as I would have hoped. And then basically storms out of his own restaurant, leaving Gordon Ramsay to finish the service. Like, that, that just blew me away. I was like, wow. Uh, I guess I'll paralyze it, because it's so fast. I mean, Sphero is kind of getting annoying now. I guess I'm going to have to flinch it to death. So yeah, that guy was just... There are some people on that. His, his menu was random as well. It was just... Didn't have any kind of rhyme or reason to it. It was just random. So, Gordon Ramsay was trying to change that, and he wasn't going to change his menu, and he was like, you know, my menu is the best thing ever, because I put it together myself, and, you know, my menu's so awesome. Yes, Greg is 26, and Natural Gift. Completely stupid and useless move. Except, of course, if you're using a, 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 a lietchi berry on a Machamp. Now, that's awesome. So, where are we? Spiro again. I guess we'll go back to Magby, just so I can T-punch it. Yeah, but anyway, that show is pretty awesome. I love Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. It's a very entertaining TV show. Anyway, rambling about anything that's not Pokemon aside, I think we're nearing the top of this tower now, if I'm not mistaken. I think there's only a couple more trainers we have to fight. One of them not being Jasmine, since she's tending to a sick thing. It's kind of, uh, isn't it kind of animal abuse, how they use uh, an Aphros as a light bulb? Like, PETA would be in that, like, oh my god. I'm sure PETA hates Blaziken, because everybody references it to uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. But come on, let's face it, it's super spicy kicking fried chicken. Uh, is that Cameron the Photographer? Yeah, that's Cameron. I, I never understood the point of him. Why is he in this game? Like, do you get something if you talk to him at every single location you go, or... What's the point of Cameron? What's the point of Politoed? I mean, come on now. No, Politoed is awesome. Poliwhirl, on the other hand, is gloves. I never understood how they can actually make Pokemon with... Look, it lived again. And used Rain Dance. They can make Pokemon with gloves and underwear and... Zuruzukin, who's got, like, a freaking hoodie... And that Pokemon in the 5th gen was a Tageki and Nageki who have like a full karate outfit going on? It's just like, what the heck? This makes no freaking sense. Nintendo. Or Game Freak. Or whoever designs them. Hi little children who like ice cream and Pringles. Obviously. Yeah, that's Cameron. I'm not gonna bother talking to him. He's a waste of game programming. They could have easily put something more interesting in. I still don't... I, like I said, what's the point of him? If anybody knows why he even exists, you can tell me. I'm sure it's something obvious that I'm missing, like a big secret or something, but honestly, I've never concerned... It's never concerned me before, so I don't think it's going to concern me now. <clears throat> On the other hand, though, Meg B is concerning me because it's freaking not letting stuff die. It's just... Everything is living at one hit point. <laughs> just getting ridiculous now. I'm, I'm just glad I have Mock Punch on him. Yeah, I'm really not looking forward to the fighting type gym, especially that freaking um, that freaking primate. It's gonna be an absolute pain because it double teams and focus punches. I, I don't have aerial ace. I don't have a flying type. I don't have anything to take down fighting types. I mean, my best bet, honestly, is to just send in flame on and hope I get burn or something. I mean, that's about my only strategy. I guess I could go for Greg and. Like, Dunsparce would work out, because I could flinch it, but obviously, he's going to kill me in one hit with a super effective fighting attack, so I can't go that route. So yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do about that, and Jasmine's going to be a pain as well, because that Steelix can take physical hits like a beast, because it's a giant hard Steelix. Oh yeah, take it. Okay, anyway, um... Hi, Mom! Will you stop spending my money on stupid crap that I don't need? Except for the Silk Scarf, I would like to have that. And the Choice Scarf, I would also like to have that very much. Yeah, I, I think I know what flying type I want, and um, I can't get it for a long time. Spoilers, it's Skarmory. Okay, anyhow, Jasmine, what are you going to tell us? This Pokemon is sick, you need to go across the ocean to get it! 
because, you know, in the anime they have boats, and they have planes, and Nurse Joy, you know, I'm the only person who can ever possibly do this, because, you know, I have a Magby, and I'm awesome. But anyway, we've opened up the gate, and blah blah blah, so now we can go get that potion, except we're not going to do that in this episode, because going, going across that ocean, I don't like it. I really don't like it. I mean, there's a lot of trainers, and I, I, I don't like it. I'm gonna let you in on a secret, guys. I just don't like it. Okay. So anyhow, let me just check out the levels here, because uh, 26, 26. Okay, they're all 26. I'm hoping to get them to get them to at least 30 before I even begin to think about taking on that gym, because it's gonna be really annoying. But before I save and heal, I'm gonna see what she bought me. Hopefully, it's something good. Good day, Peter. I've got a package from your mother. Yes, finally, I get the silk scarf. I've been waiting to get that. That'll power up Dunsparce's headbutt. And Tango Berries, you know, let's do the Tango! Anyway, no further packages. Dude, you got a package right between your legs. What are you talking about? Or are you just a lady? Um, I need some repels. you have any super repels? Thank frick. How many can I buy? 60? Uh, let's buy, uh, 30. I'm gonna waste all my money, because, you know, I don't like wild Pokemon. They're annoying, and there's nothing on that route I would... That I would want to catch. I mean, maybe Mantine, but I've already used a Mantine. Um, so, yeah, there's nothing on that route I would like to actually catch. So, anyhow, next time we will be going across the sea to that island. And I'm thinking about going up to the Safari Zone and catching a certain Pokemon if I can find it. So, hopefully I'll be able to do that. But unfortunately, that's after the gym battle, so it won't be able to help me in the gym battle. Which sucks. But, you know, whatever. Complain, complain, complain. I'm going to save now, and I'll see you guys next time.